What is up, Internet? Welcome back to Mile High K, America's only K card channel. So, it's been a while. I hurt my hand at work. So <laughs> I've been kind of not working on the van that much, and I'm kind of broke, both physically and financially. All the money! That's as good as money, sir. Those are IOUs. Just trying to figure out some things to do on the van to keep myself busy. I can't do too much uh, like nitty gritty little stuff that requires a lot of dexterity because the fingertips on my left hand are still pretty sore. I think for today, I'm going to start the process of taking out the signature wood floor of the van to get ready to add in the new false floor, which will raise up and be able to clear the engine of the Honda Beat that is sticking out of the floor. So if you haven't been following the van from the beginning of my ownership of it, very shortly after I got it, I put in this wood floor and I made that cover for the engine access panel as well as the battery. And then in under that one is kind of like the access for the coolant bottle and windshield wiper fluid. So this is just some like kind of snap lock stuff from Home Depot that you use for your house. I have this nice trim piece on the end that's for like the threshold in a doorway. So all this is coming out because I have to raise up the floor, I think about three inches in order to clear the idle air control valve and the intake. However, I am going to be modifying the intake later on in order to accept the cool sock, the charge piping from the intercooler because there is a turbo going on this van. Not too exciting, but it's the least I can do. Well, it's the most I can do with my fingers still sore. I crushed the index finger, like the last digit right here. So it's still really tender. It happened about a week ago. Um, but I can't like really clamp down with this hand. Just gonna have a, a low pressure project and I need to get this done eventually, so why not now? And then after I get this done, I might take out the fuel tank because since this car was carbureted, the fuel pump isn't going to be high enough pressure to feed into the fuel injection system. So I'll have to drop the tank and see what the fuel pump looks like in there to see if I can uh, make something for another car work or if I have to get an inline pump or whatever. But that's enough talking, let's get to it. is out. It looks pretty nice. Uh, do have some collateral damage from all the screws, a um, bunch of holes in the floor, but I don't think that's too bad. Um, when I actually build the false floor over it, I'll probably seal those up uh, somehow. Uh, there are a bunch of options as far as insulation goes, so maybe I'll use an adhesive uh, sound deadening to put underneath the false floor. But this is just some cheap stuff from Home Depot that I used some construction adhesive to attach the floor, but luckily it came off really easy. It was enough to hold it down and make it not move, but it didn't make it a total pain in the ass to remove all together. So I do need to vacuum this out and clean it up a little bit. So I think I'm gonna do that right now. And there we have it with a little bit of degreaser and Clorox wipes. I think that this looks really incredible. It was really dirty around the lip of the engine access panel as well as the battery access panel and around the cargo hooks. So I was thinking like it would be really cool to 
keep those accessible. So I'm going to work that into my design of the false floor. And something to take into consideration with the false floor is that I still wanna be able to use the seat. So the seat covers up to about here and I want it to be able to, you can get to the engine when you need to, but I also want to be able to be able to put the seat up and not have the seat down all the time because you know, it's a van and you need to have more than two people in the car. Definitely going to work on that. I'll need to seal it in so that no uh, exhaust gases get into the car because uh, that would really suck. So stoked with how this is turning out. And then on top of the false floor, I will probably put some gray carpet that I have. Uh, it's actually back there. So I was planning on putting carpet everywhere in here, but time just got away from me. So yeah, I think now the next thing that we can do uh, with a busted finger hopefully is to drop the gas tank. I don't know how much gas is actually in the tank right now, so it might be a little tricky, but if I can do it, I will show you how I did it. Okay, I'm underneath the car right now, just trying to wrap my brain around the fuel tank. And it looks like it's just held up with one, two, three bolts. They look like 12 millimeter bolts. Uh, I do know that uh, this is like where the drive shaft would go back to the transmission if my van was four wheel drive, which it is not. So there's a little gap right here and all of these red lines are part of the fuel system. So you can see the fuel filter right there. Um, I can't really see what's on top. I don't know if I'll be able to get to this with uh, my hand uh, injured. So it is about a minute later from the end of the last clip and I think I'm gonna try to get the fuel tank out but I'm gonna try to use my brain a little bit. So I have these two jack stands here that I'm going to put under the fuel tank in order to prop it up and they fit underneath the tank where it is just perfectly. So I think I'll get my jack uh, underneath here to take the weight of the fuel tank and then I'll undo the three 12 millimeter bolts that hold it up. I will lower the fuel tank with the jack onto the jack stands and then from there I can see what I need to do in order to lower it even further. Uh, I'll probably have to jack it up again and then slowly lower it down, allow the fuel fill neck to get into the underside of the car and then lower it down and probably uh, free up all the fuel lines and stuff underneath there as I go. So let's get into it. Okay, after a little bit of a struggle, there you have it. This is the Honda Acti fuel tank out from underneath the car. Uh, I made a hasty decision to just cut these off. I was having a really hard time uh, with my fingers to get these off, so I just snipped them off. And then I hastily cut this one off, uh, which wasn't the smartest move because after further inspection, I found out that the other side of this, uh, if I can find it right now, uh, give me one second. So it was a pretty hasty decision to uh, cut this off of where it connects to the car because it had these uh, quick connectors uh, underneath the car. So I really didn't need to do that, but I'll just have to solder these back together if I even end up using the fuel pump in here. So we are on the passenger side of the car and down over near the spare tire as well as the heater core. Up here, 
is where the fuel pump is. So I believe it's in here. This also has to do with the fuel system, but I'm not quite sure what this is. It might be a, another filter. Looks like I'm going to need to get a higher pressure fuel pump in order for to power the fuel injection system. Uh, but I will need to take these out. Uh, I'll probably remove the spare tire just to get some better working wor working area underneath here, but yeah, that's where we're at. All right, I got the fuel pump out finally, as well as one of the inline fuel filters. Um, as you can see, I was pretty indiscriminate about cutting the old fuel lines, uh, mainly because since this is for a carburetor, these lines aren't rated for the pressure needed for fuel injection. So I'll probably tr try and sell this. It works fine, um, but I did have to cut the old lines off which is not too big of a deal. And I did snip this little thing right here, uh, but I soldered it back together and it looks pretty nice, but it just shortened it a little bit so it doesn't fit in the little uh, clamp anymore. But definitely opened up a lot of real estate up here. So this is where the fuel pump mounted before. And then there's still some lines over here that I need to take out that run over to where the fuel tank goes. But yeah, that's a pretty decent amount of work for having a bad finger, but we'll see what we can get into next and see how we can wrap up this video. Many months later. What is up internet? Welcome back to Mile High K, America's only K car channel. So today I'm way the heck out in Erie which is north of Denver and I'm going to help someone work on their Honda Beat. So they reached out to me uh, in the comments on one of my videos tearing down my blown engine out of the van and I don't know if they're subscribed but they I don't know if you don't know if you're subscribed be sure to hit the button below but anyways they reached out to me they need some help changing the timing belt on their Honda Beat so I'm up here to help them out. Well, cool, we just got up here to Erie and here is Will, the owner. So where'd you get this little thing? I found it on Facebook Marketplace and bought it from a guy down in uh, uh, Longmont. And uh, so what what are we gonna be doing to it today? Hopefully a uh, timing belt and uh, I got some accessory belts and it's got a pretty good uh, crank seal leak, I believe. Here's the engine. Do you have a new a uh, valve cover seal? I do, yes. Okay, awesome, because I have noticed that the, since it leans forward a little bit, they tend to leak. That's like a Subaru. Yeah. <laughs> so Will used to be a Subaru mechanic, but he's not too familiar with Honda stuff. So that is where I come in. And yeah, this thing is pretty clean. Um, it is 30 years old, so like there's some clear coat issues, but man, I just cannot get over the zebra print seats they're just so awesome so i just noticed that the the driver's seat is different that one's out of an s2000 i'm actually trying to track down an original seat right now i've got a guy hopefully parting out a car who gave me a quote and i'm waiting for him to get back to me to ship it awesome is it coming from japan or uh, i think texas texas okay hopefully. cool well yeah because i love the zebra but it is cool that it has a s2000 seat that it's comfy but i kind of want it to match for sure. That's the valve cover gasket. All right, so we got all... A couple belts, itty bitty little thing, that one. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, they're surprisingly small. But... I noticed the alternator was squealing earlier when I got it. So here were the two seals. Okay. And I got... The new bearings. Yeah, I got a water pump. Oh yeah, that would probably be good to change out while we're at it. There's the Mitsubishi timing belt, which is the same one Subarus use. Oh, nice. As in some of my other videos, it's pretty straightforward. It's just that the frame rail is in the way to remove the timing belt. So what we need to do is jack up the car, take this wheel off, 
take some pressure off of the motor mount, take the passenger side motor mount off, and then it'll give us access to everything over here. Right now, the heat shield for the cat, the bolts are all rusty, so we're just cutting them off. Um, save us a little bit of time and a little bit of headache. Um, and then from there, we just have to keep clearing way to get the timing belt side motor mount off. I loosened the alternator belt already, so this is all ready to go. And yeah, pretty. Pretty straightforward. I'm operating. Oh. All right, so we got two of these bolts off. This last one is in a really awkward spot and we're getting really dirty and we're sweating really hard. And I think we both need Wendy's. Oh, <laughs> so this this bolt's almost coming off and then from there we can take the cat off and it will give access to the heat shield that's covering up the water pump then from there we can get to the actual timing belt stuff and not have to deal with um i don't know inter intermediate steps i guess that would be what it's called but yeah yeah <laughs> Just snug. <laughs> Just tight enough. After this bolts out, there's two more 14s that hold the motor mount on. The lower one's kind of tricky to get to, so that but this way. side one is kind of near the uh, alternator. Ugh. That one's more than snug. Yeah, that one's snug. Yeah, so as soon as that's off, we can get the actual big part of the mount off and then Drop the motor and do the timing belt. Something cool about Will's beat is that if you wipe off the dust here, this is a Mugen exhaust. Okay, so we got the motor mount on uh, and I actually have to leave here soon. So I'm showing Will how I got this out so he can put it back on. So this spacer goes underneath, like in between the timing belt cover, like right here. So to put the whole assembly back in, there's a little access hole right here that you put the bolt into. And it is kind of scary because it looks like it's gonna drop into the frame, but it sticks in there sort of like that. Then the little spacer goes in like that. And now to put the whole mount back on, you just fish it down in there and then you kind of push it in. So yeah, it's kind of confusing, but thankfully Honda put this little <laughs> little hole right there. And to get the actual bolt out of the access port, you have to take the spacer out and then the bolt can be fished out. But yeah, the more you know. All right, so I am done for the day. It's getting a little late. Uh, but we got it to the point where now Will is pretty comfortable with changing out the timing belt. Just needed a little bit of a guide to get it to this point because it's honestly pretty tricky. It's not as straightforward as I was making it out to be. But so we got the valve cover off, the timing belt cover off. And yeah, so now we, what Will will have to do after I leave is just uh, loosen the tensioner pulley, take it off, and then from the underside, uh, he'll be able to unbolt the water pump, which is only a couple bolts. So we got all the rusty <laughs> exhaust bolts. So I think we're we're sitting pretty pretty good right now. But thanks again for letting me come up here and wrench on it, and hopefully I get to drive it sometime. Yeah. Once we get it back together, I'll give you for a 
I'll let you drive it around for a week or so and see what you think. Awesome, that sounds great. Well, cool, man. That's, that's where it sits. All right, internet, I am just leaving Will's house and I had a great time helping him out with his beat. I'm sad that I couldn't stick around and help him finish it up, but I have some stuff I need to take care of back at my house down in Denver. So now just have to drive 45 minutes back. And he said that if he has any questions, he's gonna hit me up. And um, I'm excited because he's gonna actually let me drive it when it's back on the road and it passes all the emissions stuff. So that's it for now. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more K car content. And remember, keep it small.